Hey there, welcome to Chris Cast, Season 2, Episode 12, with all the wind outside. Please forgive the windiness. I'll find the fluffy outdoor wind thing later. I'm trying, I've already lost my uh, Sony UX570, so I'm trying to use my old, old, old first generation uh, Zoom Handy Recorder H2, so let me know. It doesn't have any wind protection. Maybe I will put my buffs on it. We'll see if that improves it. All right, this is it without the buffs, and this is it with the buffs. So I'm going to put the buffs on it and record through that. So um, please welcome to uh, Chris Cast. My name's Chris Abraham. The next segment is going to be an advertisement for Anchor.fm. And then the segment after this is going to be about, um, about um, um, object permanence and how my, AD, my diagnosed ADHD and my self-diagnosed aphantasia uh, might mean that I'm a Neanderthal slash Cro-Magnon man and not, a, not necessarily 100% uh, Homo sapiens sapien. Come back after the ad. Thank you. Welcome back to Chris Cast, Season 2, Episode 12. Um, object Permanence, colon, Aphantasia. ADHD, and the cow, and the snow. So, a joke that my dad told me a long time ago was how when he was a farmer boy, he, um, he was around, I mean, he was in frickin' North Jersey, but back in the 40s and 50s, North Jersey was not nearly as industrial as it is today. I mean, Elizabeth probably didn't look anything like it does now. Um, just like in the 40s and 50s, um, Fairfax and even Falls Church and McLean were farmland. So was, uh, this is the time before they even built, uh, the parkway and the, uh, and my dad used to ride his horse lady, his, uh, chestnut brown, uh, quarter horse lady with, uh, the blazing star on her forehead around where they were preparing to uh, put the Garden State Parkway. And um, anyway, so he was around farms and stuff a lot and told me how dumb cows were. Cows were so dumb that um, if there was even a light snow uh, covering the grass, the cows would starve to death. They would not know that uh, there was perfectly good, cool, frozen-ish, lightly snowed upon, yummy, yummy grass underneath that. And I felt like that story was about me. I don't know if my dad meant it for me, but all my friends know that if I can't see it, it doesn't exist. So I tend to, in my apartments, leave cabinets open and put everything onto racks, open racks, and bring everything and take doors off of closets and take doors off of cupboards. Um, and I spoke about this to my best friend Mark this morning and he said that uh, ob object permanence isn't a problem with me because I know where to find everything that I've lost and can't see. It's called Amazon and it's really embarrassing how many doubles and triples I have if only because a girlfriend or a cleaning lady uh, just put something away and it, I, it's not there anymore so I buy another one. Uh, that's the biggest problem with my lip balm. The reason why I bring this up is because my buddy and former employee and former student Philip Rhodes shared with me a screen capture um, that is that he found that says that his therapist who or psychiatrist or psychologist of his friend has been telling him that ADHD also comes with object impermanence and that people with extreme ADHD 
uh, have a hard time remembering uh, things happening. Uh, I will try to find it for you right now and read it to you and tell you that I totally identify with everything that is said here. All right. This guy named Aram Vertian said, A doctor told me today that object permanence plays a big part into ADHD and absolutely affects you when you become an adult. I was resistant to the idea and she just started calling me out. Quote, Do you put vegetables in the bottom drawer and always forget about them? Question mark. Unquote. Yes. Quote, Do you organize where you can see everything? Otherwise you will forget the things you put away exist question mark close quote yes quote do you think friends stop caring when you haven't heard from them question mark no I don't think that way I just assume that dudes are dudes and you pick up where you left off uh, quote do you feel numb at funerals because the idea of the person being gone doesn't fully register question mark unquote yeah I'm I'm the guy who steps up when someone dies. Um, I don't generally cry. I, I'm the guy who organizes things and takes care of stuff because everybody seems to be incredibly apoplectic. And, and sometimes I feel like they're overdoing it for effect um, because I'm incapable uh, necessarily of, of reaching that level of, of loss. Um, he goes on to say, quote, do you feel numb at funerals? Oh, just one after the other, he says, all dead on target. There is so much I don't know about myself and how I function, and it scares the hell out of me. If you know me well at all, you, you have a feeling about all these things. Unfortunately, when I find these things out and share it with you in a business environment, instead of being more compassionate to me, you hit the panic button and freak out and <laughs> distance yourself to me as a complete freak out. Anyway, in the email string, uh, Philip Rhodes says, and I quote, which I think is very interesting. Now I wonder if people with ADHD have more Neanderthal DNA than others, since Neanderthals were known to work very hard to save their sick or injured, but also left the bodies wherever, wherever when they died. Or was it Cro-Mags? I don't know, am I, I need to get my DNA checked now. Am I mostly Cro-Magnon? Am I mostly Neanderthal? Uh, je sais pas. But I find it very compelling because there seems to be a lot of crossover between uh, uh, object permanence and image permanence or audio permanence or vision permanence or imagination permanence or the ability to uh, visualize and create that permanent mind map that allows one to negotiate the long con, if you will, that is life. The ability to keep the eye on the prize, the ability to manifest the gold ring, the ability to formulate uh, a finishing point and work hard incrementally on a daily basis with the goal of winning that gold medal. Hello, puppy that gold medal, that, that silver medal. Go to daddy, go to daddy. <laughs> uh, that bronze medal of life, you know? Um, which is why, like, Sarah Wilson, as long as she was helping me mush and keep on task, she was useful for me. The moment she decided that wasn't worth her time, education, or, or wherewithal, then she wasn't useful to me anymore. And I needed to move on past her and find someone else. Um, Dan, I love Dan. He's like a brother to me. But his biggest usefulness to me is his persistence and his memory and his vision and his focus. And when it comes to friends, it embarrasses me, you know, that I, it's been three years since I've seen David Gellis or maybe fewer than that. But definitely uh, since the last time I hung out with him, 
and popped into AFib when he was, you know, at uh, when he was at the marina uh, down in D.C. Uh, and I saw him then, or only before that when he came to my bedside when I was dying back in uh, January of 2017. Um, I don't mean to be a dick. It's not out of sight, out of mind, as in willfully F you, out of sight, out of mind, you Nimrod. It has more to do with uh, the same thing with regards to my lip bombs, right? If they're not, I don't remember what pots and pans I have unless they're out there visible for me and accessible to me. It's not an eccentricity. It's not an arrogance. It's not petulance. It's not spoiledness. It certainly isn't entitlement. It's a flaw in my ability to dig in and remember that unless there, unless there's a giant uh, bowl or a basket of, of food stuff that I can see, or if it's not just right there when I open the, open the fridge, um, then it's not there at all. I don't know how that's a superpower. Uh, maybe it allows me to not be encumbered. Maybe it allows me to be more, ever more closer to living in the moment, to living real time. Or it could just be um, that I'm less evolved, that I am cro magnon man. I am Neanderthal. I am your troglodyte. I am your, oh, what's the term? There's a wonderful term. I'm a Yahoo. Um, there's so many better terms, but le mot juste eh, eludes me. Um, anyway, that's my, that's my rant for today. Uh, it's season two, episode 12 of Chris Cast. Right after this pause, I will say goodbye and give you all my info. Thanks for listening. Thank you so much for listening to Season 2, Episode 12 of Chris Cast. If you heard a floof, floof, floof the moment before I talk, it's because I threw two buffs that I use as face masks onto the, onto the H2 recorder before I started talking because it's windy and I'm hoping that this will be a barrier to the sound. Um, love you guys. Please subscribe, comment. Email me at chris at abraham.su. As I say before, the reason I've always wanted a domain name of my last name, but because um, Abraham is the prophet for and the and the pregenitor progenitor of Islam, Christianity, and Judaism, uh, everybody got the Abraham dot asterisks, all of them, except the godless Soviets. And so I was able to find um, Abraham.su, which is Soviet Union. It's a, an active but non-active uh, top-level domain name. I'm Chris at Abraham.su. I am uh, Abraham.su. I'm ChrisAbraham.com, which I've had since 1999. I am at Chris Abraham on YouTube, on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram, on YouTube. I already said that. I am at Chris on NoAgendaSocial.com. And I think my next episode will talk about the podcasts and radio shows and so forth that influence me. I think maybe the next one will be uh, no, on No Agenda and maybe a little bit on uh, MoFax and the influence that uh, Adam Curry shaggy-haired VJ has had on me. Uh, thank you very much. I love your patronage. Please give me any advice that you have towards this and tell me how the sound is. Love you guys. Talk to you soon. Ciao and mahalo and aloha. Alfita Zane. Tschüss.